a number of Alberta uh, electricity consumers are going to be in for a big surprise in 2023 and 2024. And to help explain why, I'm going to be talking to Jim Wakowicz, who's a lawyer, uh, and he's the general counsel for the Consumers Coalition of Alberta. So welcome to the interview, Jim. Good afternoon, Markham. Now, uh, I have I confess I haven't been following this story closely, so I'm going to let you explain the details of this story. Tell us about the regulated rate option and how that's going to affect some consumers in Alberta. So somewhere back 20 years ago when we restructured this industry, you have to have a default supply or sometimes they refer to it as supplier of last resort. And what Alberta called it, originally they were going to call it the stable rate option. They then wanted to call it the regulated rate option uh, because they didn't want to advertise it necessarily as stable. And so it became the regulated rate option. And then in 2022, the uh, current UCP government um, introduced a rate option stability act, um, which was attempting to try to get the price to um, stabilize. And the mechanism that they used for that wasn't really to go back upstream and fix what was driving some of the volatility. They just capped the rates and allowed the retailers charging those regulated rates, the three regulated retailers, to defer collection of any uncollected amounts over uh, the remainder of 2023 after this month and into 2024. So the, the cap was 13.5 cents a kilowatt hour. And the uh, I was reading a tweet from uh, Professor Blake Schaefer who explained that the, um, uh, the deferred amount will be $201 million. Consumers will have to pay that back. Uh, what's the issue here? Um, well, the issue is that uh, markets tend to thrive on a clear price signal. And Alberta's restructured electrical energy market, particularly for the mass market, the uh, residences, uh, smaller farms, smaller commercial operators, has really suffered for or with the lack of a clear price signal since around 1996. You know, we've had Ralph Klein used rebates and refunds. Um, uh, there was a price freeze by uh, Premier Redford. Um, Premier Notley used a price cap model. When the pandemic started, there was a deferral mechanism. And now we're getting a sort of combination of a capped price at 13.5 cents and a deferral mechanism. Okay, what's the consequence for anyone, for a, an Alberta family uh, or small business that chose this option? What What are the consequences for them? Well, those who remained on that rate option will see 13.5 cents per unit of power on their bill through January, February, and March of this year. And any uncollected amounts, and in aggregate, those total over $200 million plus associated carrying costs will be recovered in the following nine months. And some of those costs are substantial. In, in some cases, the rates or the cost of the energy being procured is double or more than the 13 and a half cents. So does that mean that there are some families in Alberta that could get big electricity bills when it's when they're required to start paying this back? Well, uh, when you say big, it's all relative. They could be worse than they might have otherwise been. Um, you know, you've taken off a price spike and you spread it out, uh, spread out the collection of it over the next um, uh, 20 some months. And, and, and that's problematic because it's no longer a clear price signal. And if people leave this rate option, uh, they could strand some of those costs unless there's an exit fee or an exit charge, they could strand some of those costs with that rate option pool and that amount may be paid over an ever decreasing number of customers. Okay, that's a part I don't understand is that you can leave the leave the rate option and somehow uh, not be charged the deferred cost, but that the people who are left in that pool have to pay. Uh, I, I don't understand. That seems like a very an inequitable way to uh to structure this 
So this happened with the pandemic deferral that the at that time Premier Kenny used. He deferred collection or allowed you to defer paying your bill. And if customers were in Alberta, let's say as a customer, and then left before that deferral was collected, oh, excuse me, that deferral deferred amount that was uncollected was then shared across all customers akin to a bad debt. It's a cost built into the system. And that caused some concern. Our agency group I act for got phone calls from people who said this was very unfortunate. So this could happen. And it's perhaps the case that the mechanics of it all haven't been ironed out or or figured out or are not transparent enough. But at present understanding of it is that the pool of $200 million cost will be there. And to use an extreme example, if everyone but one customer left overnight, that last customer would be paying off $200 million of costs. It's not likely to happen, of course. It's an extreme example, but it's one example someone on Twitter used. You know, the last RRO customer could be liable for the whole bill. Right, and, and Professor Schaefer gave us some, some other examples. So if 50% left, then the amount per kilowatt hour would go up 3.2 cents. If 75% leave, then it, uh, 6.3 cents would be added. And okay, so uh, we get that. This is not, a, for anybody who's in this option, uh, this is this is potentially uh, very difficult. Uh, how many do we have any idea how many customers have uh, you know might be affected by this? I don't know the count <clears throat> at present. It's it, it's a bit of a moving target. Certainly, there's agencies in Alberta, the MSA, um, the AUC. They monitor this. The UCA monitors it, but I think their information is lagging by a couple months. But we have an understanding that around 50% of the retail market has elected to go to unregulated providers and 50% of course then remains on regulated providers. So that means 50% of the customers in Alberta have to share this $200 million deferred cost? Yes, probably somewhere say between 50 and 55% incurred the costs and somewhere just north of 50% or around 50% will share in the repayment of it. Now, what happens if somebody, you know, watches our interview and says, hey, I'm in the regulated rate option. I want to get out of that. And they go to a spot price or they go to some other kind of a, a rate plan. Uh, uh, does that take them out of the pool? It takes them out of that pool, but now they bear the risk of whatever price they're signing up for on a on a contract and 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 you know mark them in simple terms this is a futures commodity contract situation you know i don't buy pork bellies i buy bacon by the pound you know uh and, and i don't buy coffee futures i buy my coffee by the pound so uh, we're being forced in alberta uh, not forced so much but presented with a strong suggestion that the best option for us is to make these choices and this is energy commodities futures trading um, in, in simplest terms. So if you go out and look at the market today, and a few months ago, the fixed term contracts were around $0.09 cents per unit of electricity, a kilowatt hour. I understand, I haven't looked, but I understand they're now trading around $0.13 cents in some instances. And you lock in now to a 13 or you switch to go to a $0.13 cent contract, this regulated rate option price may fall and it suddenly may look better even with the penalty. So it's a bit of a mugs game. You know, you make the choice and you take the consequences. But I would suggest that residential consumers in particular are not commodity traders, they're not energy traders. And this is a, you know, it's a bad choice. It's a it's a paradox of choice here that you, you think you can be ahead, but you don't really know until you're you're through that period in the market. Now, Jim, uh, you're a, a consumer's advocate, as it as it were, and you know, back in the days when I uh, lived in Alberta, uh, we simply locked in. We we picked a fixed rate because we we didn't want to make all these calculations. And I would suspect that most consumers are like that. I mean, this is just too confusing for most people. They nobody wants to have to sit down with a calculator every month and figure out which rate they should be going with. Um, you know, really, what does this mean in terms of the the average consumer? I mean, how is it going to affect them? Well, 
I would say it's not so much the average consumer one has to worry about. Um, you know, there's a lot of households with the tolerance to experience some volatility. Uh, it's those households where every dollar is budgeted, people on fixed incomes where they can't tolerate the rate shock, um, people who just don't have the inclination to make this choice. But we, have, we sort of have to remember that prior to this deregulation or industry restructuring, Alberta customers had the benefit of being passed through effectively a wholesale price. And the promise of retail was, well, you know, you'll have choice and other things get bundled with it. Uh, you can reduce your billing administrative charges, et cetera, and you'll be better off. Well, the frustration that's come with that choice, understanding those choices, has in all probability outweighed the benefits. And there's been no real cost benefit study. That's the other thing. We really, well, we've been in this grand experiment of restructuring the marketplace. We've never really sat down and said, okay, where were those goalposts, goalposts and how close are we to them? Well, um, uh, I, you know, I talk to a lot of Alberta people every day, and I, this is a, an issue that comes up over and over again, is how the, regardless of the cost of the electricity, the fees, admin fees, transmission fees, other fees keep going up and up and up, and they wind up, you know, they think that they have very large bills, or at least their bills have increased. So is this essentially, are you, are you making the argument this, this is a, a system design failure? I would say that there's a lot of proof that's uh, starting to suggest that every government, as I said, has had to come in and implement some legislative or pronounced consumer relief. And, and that to me is a symptom of a problem that's not happening across every jurisdiction in North America or with similar regulatory regimes around the world. It's happening in Alberta with a frightening consistency across whatever government you have, left, right, and center. And so one must ask the question, you know, what is what is causing this problem that constantly needs the government to to get in and 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 promote a remedy, whether a rebate, whether a price freeze, whether a rate cap or some blend of all those things or deferrals. And you know, the, the system, and this is a Enron design model, um, the reality is probably we didn't get it implemented uh, in a perfect, perfected or optimized way. And we have uh, haven't gone back in and corrected what some of the apparent problems are. Now, I can't let this pass. An Enron designed system because and for anybody who doesn't remember enron was the the, the, the big american uh i call it a utility for lack of a uh but anyway they the, the enron scam and and you can you can google it and and look it up on wikipedia for the background but enron has become a synonymous for, for big corporate scams uh so please explain how enron designed this system well, in the early 1990s, Alberta had um, a vertically integrated utility system. That is, companies generated power, they transmitted it, they distributed it, and they served their customers. And Enron in the United States and, and elsewhere in the world um, started to promote a model of restructuring that industry by splitting it across the functions of generation, uh, transmission, distribution, and retail. So breaking it up into four strata retail would not be regulated and it, generation would not be regulated and the wires in the middle would remain regulated and that's the alberta model that we chose and it was really enron designed and other people had their hand in it but in north america it was enron and we adopted it and what i think we now realize is well in theory there are elements of it that worked well it needed sort of constant vigilance and constant adjustment of all of the checks and balances. And where we saw certain checks and balances, we trusted they were working and now obviously they're not. So, you know, we got to go back to the drawing board on this. And are there elements of this we should save? You know, that's a grand discussion to have, but it's uh, at its heart, a model that Enron delivered to Alberta. Are we, is there any evidence, Jim, that we're going to have that discussion, that the government has raised it, that the utilities have raised it, that it's it's taking place someplace somewhere or is likely to. 
that's the multi-million dollar, maybe billion dollar question mark. Um, there's pieces of it that have to be, you know, reconsidered with some frequency, but the whole is the very difficult challenge. In the 1990s, there were a few people in government, uh, many with PhDs in economics, who could get their arms around the whole thing. They understood it all top to bottom and, and left to right. Uh, today, I'm not sure there are many people in Alberta who completely, uh, that it would have a holistic understanding of it. And, and that's part of the problem. And there's a great line from a telecom meeting one time, uh, answer from a VP about a concern around confusion. And he said, confusion breeds margin. You know, And that's what's happening here. We're, we're in a very confusing system. Like I say, there's no clear price signal. Uh, you don't know which part of your bill is going up or down in any given month unless you really understand the system. You don't know what choice you can make to remedy part of that or all of it. And there's really no way to remedy all of it beyond going to self-generation and leaving the grid. So the confusion is an aspect of this. And I would say in some regards, political disinterest, because Alberta is fortunate. That often when these prices go up, we have extra oil and gas revenue. So we, as a government, government here throws money at the problem in the form of a rebate or or some uh, payment to customers uh, to help them through hard times. And that's with this inflation concern in the Alberta government, hey, what they're doing. Well, Jim, this is a fascinating topic, and I imagine that at some point we will, re and in the near future, we'll be returning to it. So thank you very much for this. Well, thank you for having me.